from here, I mean, you can see my home. Sitting in there, when the sun goes down, glass of wine on the table, jobs are good. Lazy Susan. No, lazy Kevin. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is but a mystery. Today is but a gift. So you paint a picture of a face. A face that wasn't even close to mine. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're in Wales. We're meeting up with Kevin, who's got an interesting setup living on some land. He's created an amazing space for himself that he describes as living in a hut in the woods. Let us know in the comments what you think, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. We'll get back to it. But if you did, I'd still love you anyway. Oh, my name's Kevin. I'm 57, so I'm an old fart. I've lived alternatively for probably 16, 17 years in a van for 13 of those years. I'd often said to myself that I wanted to buy a little bit of land I could park my camper on. Three and a half years ago, I bought this place. The pace of life going forwards was just, it's just so fast. And I felt and do think going backwards is actually the way to go forwards, as strange as it, it sounds. And, you know, simpl simplify life. In doing so, I've been able to reduce the amount of work that I do, but I'll be saying that, I'm doing more physical work per day, per week, per month, living this way than I ever did in the working world. I've kind of created a harder life for myself, and I could have just had an easy street, but it's more satisfying. It's so much more pleasant. I've got my birds, I can hear my water running, the sheep in the fields, I've got my dogs. I don't need for anything else, and I've got my hut to live in. You know, it's nothing special, isn't it? It doesn't look like a buck house. It's not built with the latest technology. I built it myself. I'm not a builder, but I can keep warm. I can keep dry and I can feed myself. And that's what I do here. Enjoy life. I suppose the reason I chose alternative at the time, I was, I was pulling containers, driving containers around. And I used to go to work on a Sunday night, Sunday morning. But I'd be gone all week, every week. My career has been traveling with work. So why do I need to have bricks and mortar? I mean, why pay for something that I don't see? And that's, that's the reason why. So I, it wasn't necessarily a conscious choice. It was, it was by wanting to be frugal, it was a financial choice of which I grew to love that. It wasn't so much about the money, it was the lifestyle. Not for everybody, but everything I say will always be biased because yes, I love this alternative way where my time is my own. You know, the, the, the time, of the, there's two times in a day for me. There's light time and dark time. You know, as for days of the week, they don't really exist anymore, apart from when I go shopping. What I've got here, it's an 18 acre plot. It was just all overgrown, very unmanaged. Um, you could barely get a car down past here. You've got the leftovers of trees that I have had to cut down, but that gets wood chipped because I don't waste any part of a tree. The caravan, that's now my guest wing. It's not the guest wing at the moment because it's my veg store for the winter. The reason the caravan's there is because solar system. There's my power. I have a small, smaller system on my hut, which feeds just the hut, and this feeds power to the container for power, for power down there and in my hut as a secondary, so that I've got sufficient power. First are the fruit trees, tires of planters. I grow as much as I can. Onions, garlic, a lot of herbs, parsley, a run of beans, nasturtiums, carrots, beetroot, parsnips, sweet peas, mange too, garden peas, plenty of potatoes. With the polytunnel, I can grow enough vegetables and things, and you know, what we're using preservation techniques, be it pickling, be it canning, that I can hopefully next year not have to buy any vegetables whatsoever so i've had to learn i've had to um everything i've done gardening wise is where i used to help my dad when my dad had allotment as a kid my dad is my my inspiration for this these are going to be my 
raised beds. My shed, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces, but the one thing I will just go and get, it hangs in the back of my shed. When I first got this place, I came down here with this spade and the first cut of the ground was done with this spade. Every year when I start my work on my allotment, the first cut is with this spade. I would never do any more with it than that because it is so old. It was my father's spade and before that it was his father's spade. So the sentiment to a spade. I'm a soft old sod really. If we go from that, we got the entrance to the allotment. I've got some fruit there, I've got, I've got raspberries, tayberries, black currants, got gooseberries and then one water butt which gets fed from a water tank up there. Everything gets pumped up from the river to a tank up there and then I drop the water down. Everything's done on gravity. Um, yeah, it takes time. And then we've got my polytunnel that yes, I put up by myself. Yes, I'm very proud of it, but I wouldn't suggest anybody else do it because it was bloody hard work. I was very successful this year. It's very desolate now because of winter. I grew my own tobacco. You can grow that in the UK. So that's, that's still drying out. Whether it be any good or not, I don't know. All sorts of different peppers um, going. I mean, I've, I've dehydrated Scotch bonnet peppers and also anello and chilies and things. So I do my cooking, again, food preservation. These are all my garlic ready for next year. They're all coming through nicely now. And on, on a cold day, I mean, it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. So it's a, a, it's a warm, dry area that in, in the winter time, I can be doing things in here. There's never nothing to do, never. This stuff here, turkey tail. It's a fungi that grows naturally here, anti-cancerous. Dry it out, grind it up, make it like a little tea bag, put it in the water, drink it health benefits. Learning to, to work with and learn what nature can give. There's so much food out there that I, even I don't know about, but I am learning. It's a process. And there's me, my generator. That's me backup for everything, but that's what gives me the extra power as and when I need it. I mean, if I need to you know, run some heavy machinery, things like this, I've got stable 240 volts if I need it. Don't use it that often. You can't get any closer to nature than here. You know? I'm just a guy that has become, I'm in a very fortunate position to be able to be living the way I'm living. From here, I mean, you can see my home. I got the storage container that is basically a forced growth for mushrooms. It's not actually in use at the moment, otherwise I'll show you. Gourmet mushrooms, things like lion's mane mushrooms, reishi mushrooms, oysters. Because there was a gap between the container and the bank, it's just storage going up to the veranda, which is on top of the container, and the hut kept it as simple as possible. Wrapped it in tin, um, reasonably cheap to do, and it's very effective. There's an IBC behind the pine tree. Um, that's a thousand litre storage tank. There's a 32 mil plastic pipe from there, 100 metres long, that goes down to the river, and I've got a, a deep well pump of which then I fire up my generator, and below, just below it, there's a reverse osmosis water purification to make it potable. This wasn't a mill pond, we kind of created it as a bit of a mill pond, because I could. Next year, I'm going to build a hydro generator for electric because this runs all winter and dries up in the summer. But then in the summer, because I've got solar, I don't need the, the hydro. What was very much like that, just trees, just trees. The bit to the right here, as you can see, is some young fruit trees now. I am trying to regenerate, but a more purposeful regeneration. It? It's just about doing it. Um, put your mind to it, say you're gonna do it. There's two sections to my land. If you can see there, you've got a gate there. And we go through the two gates and we go into the second part of what I am. The track's mine as well. This is the larger part of what I've got. Through that gate there is into, that's I think 6.7 acres, I think. I haven't really done anything with it because it's just, I mean, for one man, yeah. Here with nature, I mean, the sound's around you now. That's a stressing sound, isn't it? That is extremely stressing. You know, just birds, the water's running. 
I wish they could turn the volume up sometimes. But that is what it's about. So how do I survive living here like this? Very happily, thank you. Now the first year was concerning because I was taking a gamble with everything. The locals know I'm here. They're not concerned that I'm here. I work with the locals. And I've said before, you know, I sell my produce in the shop, um, anything I have excess. Um, but just yeah, get on with the locals. I don't have an opinion. Whatever their opinion is, run with it. They allow me to live how I want to live. So to me, by not voicing an opinion that may upset, I live in harmony here. It's a trade-off, but an easy one for me. This is my little therapy corner. This really is my little therapy corner. If I'm feeling a little bit sort of sorry for myself or whatever, not that that happens very often, I'm just going to stand there, look at that, and it's like, what was the problem? There, you know. My happiness is here. How can you not be, how can you not be happy? That's everything. Absolutely everything, that is it. In my 57 years, I can honestly say I have never been as content as I am now. And that's, I think that's quite a big statement to make for, uh, for a lot of people. Yeah. All right. It might be not, it might be nice to have a partner and, and share and all of a sudden the other, but I spent so many years just doing my own thing under my own steam. Too feral for all of that malarkey now, I think. You never know, you know, never say never, but it'd take a special kind of woman to change my view, I think. <laughs> um, just come up here, listen to the birds. You know, you, you hear the sheep, you hear the carols, you hear the birds. What's there not to like? I'd give you the world like I promised I would. So I get lonely with it. I mean, yeah, I do. Um, there are times, I mean, I'm a human being. It's something that happens. We do get lonely. We're not natu naturally solitary creatures, but this little thing here, and the crazy one that's in there, they're my lifesavers. They're my two girls. They're my lifesavers. You know, so if I do feel human lonely, I've worked out that all I've got to do is go down to butchers and buy some sausages or go down to the shop and buy a pot of milk and I'm going to have inter social interaction, you know, so, you know. Yeah, I go and have a laugh and quite often I go down there and I go, do you want a cup of coffee, Kevin? Yeah, all right then. And then we sit and have a cup of coffee and have a lat natter. That's another beautiful thing about living in the rural environment where I am, is the community. When they're that beautiful, beautiful people, you try to get in that in a city. You don't even know who your neighbours are. Time. That is the one thing that I have living here. I mean, I'm busy, busy all day, every day, the majority of the time. But the one thing I do have is time. A lot of people, they've got to do the nine to five or you know, how I used to work, see 12, 15 hour days. And you're working five, six, some people with seven days a week. The cost of living, they're doing second jobs, etc., etc. And what little time they have outside of earning money is very precious and for a lot of people there isn't sufficient time in that respect to be able to even do hobbies or try and do even maintenance on their own homes because they're, they're tired from having to work. I can do what I want, when I want and I have all day, every day to be able to do that. That's the win factor. You don't need six numbers or whatever it is for a lottery ticket. I do feel that I am the richest man on the planet because the one thing that people don't have is the, the one thing I do have, time. The pace of life as I see it now is so fast. The word convenience has become expectation as crippling for a lot of people. It is the pace of life that really has hit home with me. 
I never had any intentions originally of building this and making an allotment and a polytunnel and you know, sort of going full on Tom and Barbara about life. I suppose a bit of an expectation, social expectation, I don't know, yeah, you, live off, yeah, you live off grid, you, know, you, you know, grow off the land and all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm, done, I'm not really interested. But as soon as something started to grow, then something in here just went and the whole concept of living here changed within myself. I put that down to being already living with nature, uh, living with the trees, not wanting to sound like no tree hugging hippie, but there is something about being close to nature and with the trees, there is something there. Um, and I just naturally and very organically have grown and become where I am now. This is my little storage shed. <laughs> I've got my two wheel tractor, there's my wood chipper, my little bike, which I use for going down to the village or running that is a lot cheaper than the car. Two full things of gas, that's two years worth of gas for me, that is, all stored up. Now here is home. <laughs> Needed a toilet, built a long drop toilet. It don't look very much, does it? £1.76 for these. That is what this cost. I love it. I love the fact that it costs that. It's a throne room, isn't it, boys and girls? So why not make it a throne? Basically, it's a long drop toilet built out of scrap materials. I've got a digger, dug a great big hole, and there you go. That's nature intended. And then we have the bathroom. This is basically a slipper bath, but it's a composite bath. So you can't have the fire underneath it. So I had to work out how I'm gonna get hot water. Simple, get a galvanized 45 gallon drum, get some blocks, make a fire underneath it, put it in a hose pipe, hot water. Sitting in there, when the sun goes down, glass of wine on the table, jobs are good. I've also got a propane shower. So I do have hot water fire electricery and gas, which that helps me when I'm doing my laundry. Good old fashioned twin tub. Second hand, 30 quid, off the of marketplace, absolute bargain, never let me down. Who needs all this fancy washing machine stuff? So that then obviously I'll get my power from the hut to power it up. Water comes from the IBC over there. That's my kindling pile. When we go around here, we have another log store. Logs are critical in my world. That's the smallest solar system that I have on the top of there. Uh, that's only a 330 watt panel. I struggle in the winter a little bit, but then contrary to belief, when I go to bed, I switch the fridge, free the fridge freezer off, put it on in the morning. I've never had food poisoning. And then if you've got people that are really fussy about water and things, I do have reserve water, which is from a mate's house out of his tap, what people like to call proper water. If you want to have the chemicals in your body, fine. But yeah, but that's, that's the main tank there. If you want to look through, that's the reverse osmosis system that will give you potable water. And then we come through to the abode. I just wanted a porch. I wanted to have, you know, I know it's a, bit, it's a bit of an American thing, isn't it? Having a rocking chair on a porch. The front of this, a little bit more log cabin like, the rest of it's all wrapped in tin. Built this hut in one month. From the porchway, all of this was built, all timber from the land, cut the trees down, made it fit. Learned by your mistakes due to fungi growing. That's a false turkey tail. I didn't debark, I should have debarked. So this is gonna to have to be rebuilt next year, but hey ho. It's pretty, it works. I have a few plants here, but somewhere to sit in the summer, sit there, view like that. I had a dream. Anybody can have a dream. You can either leave it as a dream and be a dreamer, or you can be a doer. And then yeah, so then we've got the yeah, basically the heart. This place is functional for what I need it to be. It's somewhere to sit, somewhere to eat, somewhere to sleep. Yeah, it's just a hut. Kitchen area. The one thing I have now, which I didn't have for two years, is a little oven. So first thing I made in that, bread pudding. Shelves, some cheap brackets and a pair of ploy. It works. Where'd you put your pots and pans? I'll stick a screw in the timber, just hang them up. Everything's functional. That fridge I got for 20 quid. The Welsh dresser cost me 25 quid. It's higgledy-piggledy in a, a very random way. That 
can create a delicious meal with crap food. Preservation, this is what I do preserving. They have my own Scotch bonnets. I do like to try and use, obviously keep, store my own food. We've got the bedroom department, really is just a bed. You know, everything is all in one space. That's the bedroom bit. Three piece suite, got that free off of Marketplace. It's somewhere to relax, rest, eat. I've got somewhere to cook, clean, wash, somewhere to sleep. And the piece of the resistance, that's the heart of the hut, the log burner. I love it when it's cold in the winter. I probably enjoy the winter more than I do the summer because I cook nearly all my meals on a log burner and there is definitely something about that flame. You sit down and it's better than watching any TV programme. Lazy Susan. No, Lazy Kevin. That's how I dry my laundry. No good spending 60, 70, 80 quid for me, mate. In a strange way, that's how I make this world work because I, I, I dare to challenge myself that I won't spend the money, which enables me to spend more time here than nor for the gate doing work. People go out and spend money on air fresheners and plug-in fresheners and oils with smelly stuff in, they burn with little candles and all that. It all costs money. Old saucepan, pine needles, which I've cut off my pine trees, water out of the river, put it on the fire, pine fresh hut. That, to me, makes me smile. I've learned something that is not forcing me to spend money. It's how I'm thriving in my world, doing it the way it was done generations ago. Again, something I mentioned before, stepping backwards to step forwards. When I built this place, obviously just had windows on one side, because that's the only three windows I had. But with the kitchen, I mean, I can lay in, I can lay in my bed, I can stand in my kitchen, you know, a cold winter's day, it's raining outside, the fire is on, and I'm here with a view that I've got now. Why do I want to be anywhere else? This is my paradise. I can stand there and I can look out there and see the birds feeding, see the, see the livestock up in the field, you see the wind blowing, you see the rain coming in, you see the sunshine and you see everything out through that window. That's the window to the outside world. But how do I survive here? I constantly try to be less reliant on the outside world, which reduces my financial need. But yes, there is a financial need and you're not going to be getting your Chinese takeaways, your McDonald's on a regular basis. You know, you know you're going to be cooking your pastas and your rices. You cut your cloth to suit. About 200 pound a week, and I'll have a little bit left over. And I'll keep my car on the road, I'll keep my little motorbike on the road. It keeps my dogs well fed. And it's, and for me, I can keep my life very cheap in retrospect. Look at me, a fashion guru. You know, one pair of boots a year, 35, 35 pound for a pair of boots. Yeah, I'm one pair a year. To earn my income, I am extremely fortunate. I can earn in one day what I need to live on for one week. 52 weeks in a year, 52 days work. I, I could earn my money other ways if I wanted to. I'm a, basically, I'm a driver by trade. I drive trucks. Um, so there's always a call for truck drivers. I live a simpler life through choice. So it's, it's what each person perceives as good for them. Is there a negative here? Yeah, when it's raining constantly for about four or five days and you're running low on logs, maybe, you know, but generally speaking, no. And I am aware of many people that have tried to live this alternative way, thinking that they can just get something like this, sit down, do nothing and have a great life. And they fail miserably because you can't sit down and do nothing. If you want to be warm, if you want to be able to wash, if you want to be able to charge your phone, nobody does it for you. So, call that a downside. It's not easy. If you think it is, you've made a mistake. You've got to cut the lugs. You've got to get the water. You've got to sort the solar out. 
When it comes to the future of, of this place, um, who knows? An old thing that I said to me once, yesterday is history, tomorrow is but a mystery, today is but a gift. I enjoy each day as it comes. I'd like to die here. I mean, that might sound morbid, but this is where I've come to retire. I see this as my retirement home. I accept age and health could challenge me. And if that day was to arise, then I'd have to look at and consider selling up if I couldn't manage living here. I'll go and buy an narrowboat. I could never live conventionally anymore. I'd like to give people a bit of hope. There, there is better times ahead, but you quite often you have to focus and do that yourself. People aren't going to do it for you. And I hope that what you see, what you've heard, is helping to give you any bit of inspiration, um, a bit of an idea as to what this world is actually like. Yes, I do have a little YouTube channel. It's The Man in the Woods. It's more like a little video diary blog inspirational things for the few people that do follow it to help them get through their days. The world is full of negatives um, and problems and I'm just trying to put a little bit of light upon it. Hopefully people can see a, a, a positive out of what you've seen today. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again there. Big thanks to Kevin for inviting us over. Got a really interesting story and a cool setup going on. And what an amazing tour that was as well. Let us know what you thought of his land and the video in the comments. And if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. And make sure Kevin's got a YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out in the description. And we'll see you in the next video. Cause I